Yeah, fools. Big T here with another video. And in this one, I'm just going to talk about my adulation, admiration for Nintendo and Sega and why I will always put them above uh, any other game companies. Just for some background on my gaming history, uh, I am a baby of the 80s and a kid of the 90s. Um, my first gaming experience was not on the NES. It was actually on an Atari 2600. And uh, I never really liked the Atari 2600, even back then. My favorite console of that time was actually the ColecoVision. Uh, the graphics were better than Atari 2600. You didn't need to use as much imagination when you were playing those games. You kind of started to see uh, where gaming was going to go as far as modern gaming. Basically the NES era. NES, uh, Sega Master System era. I liked ColecoVision uh, the most back then. And uh, my first gaming experience as far as Nintendo goes was my uncle uh, propping me up on his knee up against a uh, Donkey Kong uh, arcade machine. I was, you know, maybe three years old or something. I don't know. I'm sure the arcade had, the Donkey Kong arcade machine had been out for a while. And uh, that was my first taste of Mario and Donkey Kong. Uh, we somehow got a Master System somewhere in there after the NES came out. So I uh, became a bit of a Sega kid. And my first console that I actually owned uh, myself, it wasn't like uh, something I shared with my cousins or something like that, was the Sega Genesis my mom bought me. Um, when it came out, it was at 89. I think I got mine 89 or 90, I'm not sure, probably uh, probably 89, 89 or 90. So those were my first two big experiences with uh, gaming consoles, uh, well three if you count the Coleco. That wasn't mine, I was kind of sharing it with my cousins and along with the NES. But I got more more gaming in on the NES and the uh, Sega, uh, Sega Genesis or Sega Master System. It was mostly Nintendo and Sega. They came in as gaming companies. Obviously, Nintendo came in to a dead U.S. market and resurrected it. They paid their dues. Nintendo paid their dues uh, with the NES and uh, obviously the uh, Ducky Kong arcade machine and I believe the Popeye arcade machine was also Nintendo. Sega came with the Master System. It was a kind of a rare system. It was around. You know, you knew people that probably had one, but. It was pretty rare. It wasn't until the Genesis that that Sega got out there and were doing their thing and uh, got really big and really went after Nintendo's market. Uh, Genesis does what you can't, uh, can't do on Nintendo. Uh, what Nintendo don't. <laughs> it was pretty, pretty clever, funny stuff. You know, they mixed it up, and uh, Sega uh, actually sold more Genesis consoles in the US than Super Nintendo did but overall Super Nintendo sold more consoles but that was pretty huge you know because Nintendo had a monopoly basically on the uh, North American market on most markets so it was really uh, uh, shocking for that to happen you know that was a good gaming era you know you Nintendo and Sega duking it out um, there was a lot of creativity like great games came out of that you got uh, you got a lot of uh, erratic behavior from Sega with the 32X and the Sega CDs and all this stuff they were doing to try to maintain their uh, slight edge in the US market but it was just a great time in gaming you know it wasn't all this vitriol and fighting it was just it was pure um, camaraderie was, uh, I liken it to like I mean I'm sure there's some people on the fringes of Boston fans and uh, Yankees fans I'm a Yankee fan, um, but even through all that vitriol, there is a there is a respect there, like, and uh, uh, mostly a mutual respect. Even though my my Yankees uh, far outnumber the championships, <laughs> but uh, that's neither here nor there. But I mean, it's just it was different. It wasn't like it wasn't like people were like shutting themselves off to other consoles. And you know, oh, I'm some a super fanboy. They would still you would still go and play the other console if you didn't have it yourself or you um and vice versa you know if you had a super nintendo you want to go play your friend's house for a sega and if you had a sega you want to play your friend's house super nintendo because there was great games on both sides you know it was uh, pretty different uh there was you know a lot of shared multi-plats so some of the multi-plats ran better on super nintendo some of them ran better on genesis 
Um, it was just one of those things. So they paid their dues, and that's why I will always respect them and uh, admire Sega and Nintendo overall. Sony obviously came in in 95, uh, I think it was 94 in Japan, but 95 um, they came in, and uh, Sony, uh, unlike today, Sony was a huge, like, just brand. Uh, you wanted the best TV, it was a Sony. You wanted the best speakers for your car stereo, it was a Sony. DVD, or not DVD, but a VHS player, all that stuff. Sony was a huge brand. Sony had, you know, they still do, uh, movie studios, um, and they had uh, music with Columbia. Uh, they, you know, they had everything. They were quite bigger company than they are today. So they had a huge name recognition because um, other companies tried to like come in, uh, other non-gaming companies tried to come in. You had Philips um, to name, you know, one and uh, yeah, Panasonic 3DO. Um, so you had other companies, electronic companies trying to make video game consoles, but it didn't work because they didn't have the bigger, the big name as uh, Sony did and, the, you know, the quality associated with Sony. So it was much easier for them than to say it was a Nintendo who had to like scrape and struggle. Um, Sony could come in and just, you know, hey, throw some money at these guys, throw some money at this guy, and uh, development studios would flock over. And that's what happened. And that doesn't take anything away from the, the PS1. PS1 is a great console, uh, for sure. But this is, this is me just talking about how I uh, have more admiration for the guys who paid their dues instead of <laughs> kind of paid their way in. Um, but like I said, the PS1 is one of my favorite consoles. Um, I, one of my, it's one of my biggest uh, uh, collections for a console. I'm pretty sure I have over 100 games on it. So, um, great console. And um, obviously Microsoft came in 2001 and they also had a huge name, you know. Uh, it didn't help them as much as it helped Sony. But the Xbox original was an actually a really good console. It had a lot of great exclusives on it. And uh, I just think the, the, the massive uh, marketing and uh, electronics power that was Sony just was too much for anybody to handle with the PS2 because that DVD player, man, that DVD player was a huge thing. Maybe some of you younger guys don't know or understand having that DVD player in the PS2 um, and that made it the cheapest DVD player on the market and it was the Sony DVD player so you knew you know there was quality in that hardware and uh, you know Sony took huge losses to put that thing in and sell it at a huge loss um, but it totally helped PS2 sell, uh, sell uh, crazy so they you know they Sony again had the advantages of being a huge company with a huge name and a respected brand and they didn't have to pay the dues the way uh, everybody else did, even, uh, even Microsoft to some extent. Um, but, you know, I, honestly, Microsoft, um, while being a big, you know, computer name, their hardware, man, I don't know, it's like I never liked the look, the design of their hardware. It was always big and bulky, <laughs> especially the Xbox original. I think one of the things that hurt it was that bulky-ass controller. That controller was huge. And then they came up with the controller Type S, which was way better. It should have been the controller they came out with to begin with. But, um, you know, they kind of stepped, even Microsoft, when they came out, they were kind of stepping on or being lifted up on the backs of Sega, who was obviously uh, on their way out. Um, they, you know, they took a lot from this Dreamcast, the color scheme of the, the buttons, the, you know, uh, the, the memory card slot and the controller, um, uh, which, you know, Sega got from Nintendo, so it was kind of, uh, passed down. So, I mean, they, they didn't pay their dues either. Obviously, they're a huge multi-billion dollar company, um, even way bigger than, uh, uh, Sony at the time and they could spend and spend and spend and they spent their way to multi-plats and or third-party companies and uh, but you know 6th gen was still a great gen um, it wasn't until the 7th gen where all that stuff just started to come to a head and kind of ruin gaming for me but the main point like I said is that I'll always respect Nintendo and Sega over 
everybody else because their gaming companies first, they were all about video games, you know. Uh, they both kind of came from like, uh, I'm not sure about Sega, I can't remember, but Sega did something before video games. Um, I think it was electronics based or maybe they did like pachinko machines, something like that. And then Nintendo obviously came from uh, a kid's uh, playing card company to uh, toys in the 70s to video games in the 80s, obviously. So they paid their dues. And uh, uh, Sony and Microsoft, to me, never really did that. And they didn't have to, obviously, because they had a huge brand name. And that got them through and got them, um, you know, in the positions they are in, even to this day. So, yeah, this is not, you know, to knock either one of them. But because of that is why I will always hold Nintendo and Sega over them. Uh, even though Sega, like I said, doesn't even make hardware anymore. Yeah, so in light of, like, you know, uh, Sonic Mania coming out, I just kind of started thinking about that and, you know, why I hold Sega in the steam, the steam that I do. Obviously, they used to make really great games and consoles, so Sega Saturn is one of my favorite consoles of all time. It didn't matter that it didn't sell that great. Uh, it was a great console for me, to me. Uh, obviously, it had its disappointments, but... At the end of the day, uh, Sega consoles, I love them, and uh, same with Nintendo, and uh, they just, they're on a different level for me, and uh, uh, like I said, they'll always hold heavier weight uh, than Microsoft or Sony, so yeah, let me know what you guys think, uh, as always, thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you fools next time, peace out. Oh yeah, one more thing, play Nintendo fools, do, 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 do.